Hello everyone. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating a controller, an Angular controller, inside of an AM component. So uh, again, this assumes that you already have everything set up. So we'll get right onto it. So in order for us to do that, what we need here is first we need an AM component that allows us to do all the controller logic inside of it. Luckily for OLS, we already have one, which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, first of all, we're going to go here and we're going to open a file that's called support dynamic data. Support dynamic data is the actual component that will allow us to do um, all, all these things of, of using different templates inside of it and selecting different Angular controllers. Um, this doesn't seem as much, and this seems a little bit iffy. So what, we're gonna, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how it works. Um, so you need to go to AEM, and you're going to go to your uh, to your profile. Well, any template that you already have. I'm going to open this one that I already have here. And... I'm going to go to the edit mode here on the sidekick. And from here, I have this component. This is the one that I'm looking forward to, support dynamic data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it below uh, everything here. So I'm just going to place it here, support dynamic data. And I'm going to go to edit. So what happens here when I go to edit? First of all, shows me a couple of different components or different controllers that I already have here. Um, and, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm, I can select any one of these and it will just go ahead and do certain magic inside of it to grab the actual template that it needs and to obviously connect it with the controller that we want. So um, also there are some other rules here that will, for example, show us more fields in case that we need to do uh, an additional thing. So for example, if I were to select the, this user profile information, it adds me a couple of other items here that basically lets, lets me know which section I'm going to display, uh, the section title, the background image, and uh, so on and so forth. Before I move any forward, I'm going to quickly discuss where these fields are located. If you go back here, uh, in this same exact folder where zipper dynamic data HTML file is, you're going to see that there's a dialog XML file. Dialog XML is the one that uh, holds all that information. So if you open that up, uh, you will see that we have all these different options. So we're going to be using this because we're going to be creating a new controller. Right now, we're not going to get into a lot of detail here. Just know that everything that is set up here is, uh, is needed because this is where we tell AEM which properties we're going to be looking for. So as you can see here, we have one of these uh, that's called um, select how to display. That's the field description. And we will go back here and see what we have here. Select how to display. This is it. And we should have a field label called display, which is this one. So basically, that's where we're looking for information and saying, OK, these are the different options that we're going to be having. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add uh, an eighth item. And I'm just basically going to use this primary type the same way as it's on the other guys. Uh, it's just structured. But I'm going to add another checks. And we're going to place uh, our test controller. Still don't know what we will do with it, but for now, let's just uh, leave it like that. Uh, then we're going to have uh, a value that's going to be test controller. And uh, I'm just going to copy this to avoid any errors showing up elsewhere. So basically, I'm, I'm saving there. And now if I go back here and run my deploy command, which as you guys may remember, uh, means it's just a wrapper for this MVN. This Maven command. Um, what, we're, what this is going to do is when 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 the build is done, we should be able to see an additional option here. Uh, instead of only having all these options, we're going to have another one. It's going to be the test controller. So let's see how this is doing. 
Uh, okay, so while that happens, let's just, you know, start doing something else uh, because this might take a little bit longer than expected. So if I go back here to the code, let's go into why this matters on, on, on what this is doing. Let's, <clears throat> for now, let's remember uh, what we were looking for. Uh, these are all the variables that we have on the dialog XML file, and this is the actual template that AEM will read. Um, so basically, the thing that it will do is it will look for the display as property. Uh, so display as is this one. Um, as you can see, uh, well, basically, this one is a really important one. The name actually is here. This can have any name, doesn't matter. Um, but it's looking for that value. So whenever I change these options, whenever I select something different, it will populate this value or this display as value with this actual test controller or product subscriptions or user profile info or events feed or whatever value that we already have here. So <clears throat> basically what it's doing here or uh, a, a very basic uh, sidely test is, okay, test basically is something aching to an ng if. So it's basically asking the, the server, hey, do you have property that's called display as and does it have a value that's different than help? In, in case that I select pretty much anything, any one of these options except help, it will be a, a true value and then I will include a different component, or a different template. In this case, template uh, underscore zero. What does this zero mean? It's basically just a way of formatting uh, instead of, you know, you could also do some tricky ways of concatenation, but this is a much cleaner way. Basically this zero, uh, all this stuff will be replaced by properties display as. So it's going to be looking for template underscore, template underscore Twitter feed, template underscore events feed, and template underscore user profile info, etc. So let's see if we have any of those. So I'm going to open here and of course we have template underscore Twitter feed, template underscore events feed, template underscore user profile info, and so on and so forth. In this case, what we really would need is to create a new template. So uh, I'm just gonna do a copy here of one of these, uh, perhaps not this one. Uh, I'm just gonna make a copy of, I'm gonna make a copy of one of these guys. Um, so right now, if I, this should have been, okay, that one is done. So I'm gonna refresh this page. And for now, it's gonna see, or we're gonna see a new item available on the dropdown, but it's not gonna be doing pretty much anything because we haven't given him a template. So if I go here to edit, uh, I should be able to see this new one, the test controller, where I can click on it and I can say, okay, and it's not gonna do anything because there is no template to look for. Um, so there's nothing here. Let's fix that. So for us to be able to fix that, <clears throat> let's go here and uh, let's go, let's create a new template. And I'm just gonna paste all of these for now. I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna call it template underscore test controller dot HTML because that's the name that we provided here on the dialog test controller. So now we are, whenever the user selects uh, the test controller, it's actually gonna put all of this in place. So uh, it, this partials stuff is useful if you're using a, uh, an, a Sightly or AEM component. If it's a completely angular thing, we can leave it out. And for now, that's what we're gonna do. So we're just gonna remove all of these things uh, for now. Um, well, maybe I shouldn't remove this one because we do need to be on this specific template. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Uh, please place this component uh, in, in here, that's fine. So you know what, I'm just gonna keep everything here. Uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, this is a template and basically I don't need any of these things and content is this, so I'm just going to remove and make it as bare bones as possible. 
So hold on a second. Output. There we, there we go. So <clears throat> again, this is as bare bones as possible, and I'm gonna just for now just to be able to look at something. In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna remove all of this stuff. I don't need a template here. I'm gonna make it very very simple. I'm just gonna add here a class, uh, something, just so that we know that we are actually building this. So this is gonna be our test controller page. Um, and let's deploy again and see what happens here. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're just creating a new template for AEM 2.2 whenever we select the test controller option. Let's see how this is doing. Should take a lot less time than the last time, but seems to be taking sweet time. Okay, well, while that happens, let's start doing something like, okay, we're gonna use an NG controller. And since I don't really have a lot of imagination right now, I'm just gonna call it controller. And we do not have that test controller yet. So this is not gonna work. Uh, right. Before we do that, let's go back and look at our our new component. So, okay, let's put on this. Um, we should be able to look at that div that just has some basic text inside of it. So let's see if that worked. If I go here, let it load a little bit. There we go. We see test controller page. So now anytime a user or an editor chooses or selects this test controller option inside of this support dynamic data component, we're going to be looking at that. If we choose or select anything else, that's not going to be showing up. So that's our way of selecting which controller we're going to be showing. Let's go back here, and we have our test controller page. Now, for that to happen, we need to build a controller, and we need to build, uh, and we need to let Angular know where, uh, I mean, AEM know where that will file will be loaded from. So if you remember from the other video on the overview from AEM, you probably remember that we need to open js.txe file um, because that's the one that has all these services, controllers, directives, etc. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a new one, uh, support Angular controllers, and I'm going to call it test controller because, again, I don't have a lot of imagination here. So now that I have that, I'm just going to do something like uh, creating a new one. Uh, actually, I, I can just open uh, something like support uh, tab. And I'm just going to create a new one here because that way I don't have to worry about going to that specific uh, folder. So <clears throat> let's write something up. So let's uh, first off create our, uh, we're going to call this one test controller.js. And we're just going to create something real quickly, we'll just strict. And we're going to call it function uh, test controller. We're going to be receiving the scope. Uh, it's pretty much all we need. Um, what else can we place here on this component? We probably want to inject something here. So let's do that and be like uh, test controller dot inject. And uh, if we're passing the scope, then Let's do that and pass the scope as well. And uh, let's make it available on our Angular application. So the Angular application inside of OLS is called support EMC. So every directive, every filter, every controller or service should be under this support EMC namespace. Once that's done, uh, let's uh, call it uh, test controller. And it's going to be using this test controller thing. Okay. Um, we can basically say then something like, uh, I don't know, what would be a good idea here? I don't need this. Something like, okay, scope.init. And inside of that, we're going to add a function and we're going to receive 
Um, something. Uh, so let's call it object. We're receiving an object, and we're going to be doing something with that. Perhaps, uh, you know what? We're going to be receiving a string. Let's call it a CR. And that string, basically the only thing that we're going to be doing here is uh, we're also going to be naming here another variable like scope uh, display text. And it's an empty thing. And a very basic bare bones thing, uh, scope dot display text, it's going to be the same thing as CR. So basically, what this would do is, uh, if we go, if we go back to our controller here, uh, and we we can also do something like scope uh, other text. This is going to be saying like test controller test high. So we can definitely just go back here and say, okay, you know what? We're going to add a div here and another. And we're going to just hit this guy, grab the data. And if there is an ng init, uh, we can call init. And we can say, you know what, uh, some other value. And we can display that somewhere, uh, maybe below. I don't know. Oh, wait, what was the name? Display text. Display text. That's the name of the variable. So with that said, uh, let's redeploy. We now have added this file, this template test controller. Or, I, mean, I mean, this test controller JS file. We have added it to the JS files that will be compiled and will be added inside of AEM. Um, we also went ahead and created a very basic bare bones uh, controller that just does a couple of dumb things here. And we modified the actual controller that's, that we're using. And we're going to be displaying just some random text. And that's pretty much it. So once this is done, um, first of all, I'm going to be opening up my uh, JS file locally. But sometimes, like I said in the other video, um, AEM doesn't clear cache, and so you're left with an older version, and it leads to confusion here and there. So let's see. Okay, that is done. The build has happened. I'll call it five, this one. And I mean, I'm going to be looking for uh, test controller. There we go. So there we have it now. And if I go here and refresh this page, I should be able to see the controller working inside of my uh, AEM instance. So let's see. All right, so test control is as high and some other value. Well, first of all, let's go, uh, I don't really know if that's correct, um, but we have uh, some other value that was the actual value that we placed on that init variable. So that's correct. And that's it. I mean, we're, if we go back here and actually open the development tools, we will see that we're actually using, and Angular is already, you know, creating all of these things and looking at the ng bindings. And I think that's pretty much it. So that's basically it. That's the way that you guys can go ahead and modify a component that we already have on OLS, take advantage of it, support dynamic data. That's the one that allows us to create uh, Angular controllers inside of our application in a very easy way. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.